hello there and welcome to Walking Talking Gardeners and a big thank you to all of our lovely subscribers, you know who you are, for supporting this channel. Anyway, let's get back to business. Today we're going to talk about tree ferns yet again. I know we've done a few times on this, but we had a, we had a question from one of our viewers who asked me uh, why, why do you put in so much uh, fertilizer into the tree fern crown? And there is a very, very good reason for this. And the reason for this is all about trying to maintain the quality of the fronds, size of the fronds, and, uh, and to reduce that diminishing of the top of the trunk area. Let me show you. So if you want to maintain your tree ferns in the best condition uh, possible, then they're going to need a lot of water and a lot of feeding. Otherwise, you get stunted, uh, thin leaves. They're not going to be strong and rigid like, like these guys here. Uh, and, and one of the big features you notice is that this crown, so this is all the new crown here, this crown will start to shrink and shrink and shrink, and it will lose condition. You'll lose the green color, it starts to go yellowy, and it'll be stunted. And, and you know, in extreme cases, you can see something that's what well, probably a good 12 14 inches in diameter there you know that second stage gets smaller smaller and smaller until it's only like a few inches across so what we want to try and do is stop that deterioration in the condition and maintain it as best as we can and we do that by uh, watering and feeding it as it would have been watered and received its nutrients in the wild and in the wild it receives an awful lot of water up to about one meter of rainfall each year plus you know all mist coming down into here um, and a, a quite you know not much nutrition much nutrition down here quite often in the rainforest but certainly there's a little secret going on in here where this tree fern can receive an awful lot of its nutrients and we'll talk about that right next as we have established uh, tree ferns all the tree ferns uh, they uh, are native to rainforests and uh, cloud forest uh, climates. Now, when you see them planted in England, what do you see above the tree fern? That's right, blue sky. There is no forest canopy, very rarely seen, above uh, planted tree ferns. Now, um, this is what you should expect. That's right, so in its native habitat, uh, you will see above a tree fern a uh, multi-layered canopy up to 60 to 100 meters tall or thick <laughs> light sucking uh, leaves and it's these leaves that are constantly falling dropping into that uh, that structure above the front structure above the tree fern so looking straight on to a tree fern what shape is that well I'll tell you that shape is a funnel shape and what I'll do is I'll get onto, uh, I'll get onto something that will give me some height and we will look directly in, in to the middle of this and see what it looks like. So here we are above the, uh, the, the frond structure uh, of a Dixonia Antarctica and look at it, absolutely lovely funnel shaped. And, and really what this is, is effectively a trap. So this wide 45 degree angled stiff frond that you see running up, 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 all lead down to the central thing that is effectively, you know, you could laugh, but you can imagine that this is some sort of plant mouth. And the thing is, that is almost what it is because inside there, I don't know if you can see, and bearing in mind, this plant is, is just open to the air. There's no canopy above it. You get a buildup of leaf litter in there. So what happens is your, your uh, tree fern is creating its very own mini compost heap in the uh in, in in its crown wonderful so over the years this builds up into a mat of uh, vegetation and uh it slowly rots but the thing is you can't just have all this rotting nutrition going into the uh the trunk without the uh the heavy rainfall otherwise the uh the nutrient mix will be too rich for the root system uh you get exosmosis so that will damage the plant system and the plants will suffer so as I said before, it's all about maintaining the condition of these plants. Okay, so I'm hoping that this explains why I put a high dosage of fertilizer into the crown here. And that's because this whole thing should be, you know, and you, you only put these high dilutions in if you're uh, giving it the right amount of water because these require enormous amounts of water. So if you're putting in a high uh, concentration of uh, liquid fertilizer in here, as it passes into the, um, 
uh, the trunk, the fibrous, <laughs> fully soaked trunk, that then gets diluted down into a, uh, a, a, a richness of uh, fertilizer that the plant can take with no problem whatsoever. Now, do not put very, very rich uh, dilutions or concentrates of uh, fertilizer in the crown without this trunk being completely wet, otherwise you can damage the root system. But like I say, it's all about maintaining the best condition of this plant and the reason, oh sorry, the, the way to do that is to provide as best as you can the conditions that it would have evolved to survive in. And that is an awful lot of water and a little, its own personal compost seat that lives in the ground. Don't forget this plant here, like I say, probably 60 years old. So it would have had 60 years worth of of canopy detritus raining down, falling into that funnel, that's like trap-like funnel, into the crown, and then that rots down, and that's where it gets its nutrition from. But that stuff rotting in there, that's gonna be high concentration fertilizer. So don't forget, lots of water, lots of food, don't do them without the other, because you're gonna ruin the condition. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you have any further questions, then do not hesitate to, uh, put one in the comments and I will get back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and goodbye.